Hey everyone, this is Tim from Christmas Rhode Island, and you're watching Trucker Jars Vlogs on TJV. Well, I'm filming this Monday, so it's time to go back to work. I had the whole day at home. I've just got to run in and get to work tonight. Because tomorrow morning I gotta make my way down to Lincoln, Nebraska with a load of lumber. But tonight I have to go down to the yard, tarp it, I'll tie it down, tarp it, and I'll probably drive up to like the US border and start from there tomorrow morning. Home time has been fun, but it's time to go back to work. Here she is. This is the load. We just gotta throw a tarp over here real quick. We're gonna have to make sure to put corner protectors on this here, otherwise that'll rip through the tarp. We've got a 53 foot flatbed tandem. It's a little bit windy out here now. I didn't think it was that windy. Man. There it is, let's throw the tarps on her and let's head to the border. All wrapped up like a Christmas present. I backed into the dock here because no one's here using it and uh, the wind is coming from behind that building. Oh, look how dirty my arm is from this, yikes. Crazy, looks like I got a crazy black tan. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, so the wind was blocked. It was pretty windy this way. Uh, wouldn't blow my tarps away on me when I had them on before I could tie them down. So I got these two straps here. Those two straps are to keep the middle part down and to reduce flapping. I got those edge protectors on all the edges to make sure that the tarp doesn't rip. And I think it turned out pretty neat in the back too. Hey, eh? how about that? Like a Christmas present. I'm ready to pull this down to Nebraska. And thank you to those of you who left comments in my comment section about these uh, binders screwing out and falling out into traffic. That would be terrifying. So what I've done is I've run a bungee through the bottoms of them all like that. That way uh, they can't turn and they won't be falling out into traffic because that would be cr that'd be crazy. That'd be a bad kind of crazy. Not my usual kind of crazy. Well, we made it to Latalia, Manitoba. This is pretty much right at the U.S. border. U.S. border is probably about five, 10 minutes that way. Diesel, you got any deposits to make before we leave Canada? No, nothing? All right, let's go. Let's go to America. Wanna go to America? So we're on our way to Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska with a load of lumber tarped lumber so it's very special lumber it's uh osb board again and then after we deliver that tomorrow morning in lincoln we head over to st joseph missouri and pick up a load of steel i think uh, some something waiting for us there on another trailer tie it down and bring it back to the yard and that'll bring us back to the yard uh day after tomorrow in the evening unless if something goes wrong but should be fun. I'm going to wake myself up here, do my pre-trip, get on the road. Load won't deliver itself. Here's the load, wrapped like a nice Christmas present. If you guys watched yesterday's video, actually I probably combined that in this video. Same one. I'm actually pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Looks real nice. I should be a, a professional gift wrapper, maybe. I wonder if there's any money in that. The only thing I gotta watch for is uh, like these corners here. I have a, a piece of rubber, a rubber guard underneath there so that the tarp doesn't rip through. But And then I got these straps on here, yeah, too, so that the center section doesn't flap around too much, right? Come on, buddy, let's go. Let's go. Don't get your paws too muddy, man. I just shampooed my carpets in the truck. I got a protective blanket in there anyway, so. All right, you ready, old man? Okay, come on. Good boy. You ready? 
Oh man. I just did my whole pre-trip and I forgot to start my e-log. 13 hours and zero minutes of remaining drive time. Shoot. Okay, well, I have to sit here for 15 minutes and wait for this to catch up then. All right, well, how are you guys doing? It's hot. Like, summer has arrived in Manitoba. It's hot. It was 29 degrees yesterday afternoon. It's supposed to go up to about the same today. All night was actually pretty hot as well. I actually had to start up the truck and blow the air conditioning a little bit. Even though I had the fan blowing on me, I had all my windows open with the screens and stuff. Open them up again. Oh, yeah. It's that time of year again. And I'm not complaining because I, I like this so much better than the cold. Apparently, according to the experts, it's supposed to be the hottest summer in human history in Canada. Which is confusing because I thought the carbon tax was supposed to fix that and keep the temperatures down. So, not only are they stealing my money because it's getting warmer, but it's also not helping anything. It's not fixing anything, so. They're getting richer, I'm getting poorer. The weather's getting hotter. Par for the course, eh? But, eh. We usually have really hot summers here in Manitoba, so I'm not too too worried about it. We did buy a, a second air conditioner for our house because our, our house doesn't have central air. We don't really need it. You open up all the windows, you get a nice breeze through there. We have a portable air conditioner that we can move from room to room. Uh, but it needs a vent, right? It has to have a vent hole. You attach the vent hole to the wall mount or the window mount, and it blows the hot air out and blows cold air into the house. But our room that we're using for, for now, because we're in the process of renovating our master bedroom, we haven't started yet, but... We're in that room, it's a little small. All five of us sleep in there, me and Britt and the three dogs. And in summertime, it just gets the cooking in that room, just cooking. So uh, I bought a window mount air conditioner for that room for this, this summer, so we're prepared. Looking forward to that. All right, Diesel? I'm gonna stay nice and cool this summer. You're a cool dude, man. This is the lineup at the border. This guy, and it goes all the way, way out there. And it doesn't seem to be moving at all. Wonderful. Looks like a beautiful day, eh? Not too bad. Oh. I kind of figured this is what was going to happen today. Let's take a look at this weather ahead of us as soon as I turn left to get onto the interstate here. We're in South Dakota now, Interstate 29, We're going southbound. And it's been plus 34 Celsius all day. And now we got this. <laughs> I knew this was coming. Every heat wave is followed by a downpour, usually. All that water evaporates so fast off all the lakes and rivers and comes right back down onto us. Okay, I hope we get a good lightning storm out of it at least. I love thunderstorms. We've still got quite a ways to go yet. About six hours of driving. We'll get close to around Omaha. 478 kilometers on I 29 South. I was thinking of maybe stopping at the Flying Jane Council Bluffs, but by the time we get there, it'll be right packed. Not too sure where we'll stop yet, but we'll get as close as we can to Lincoln, Nebraska. Maybe we'll get through Omaha and onto the I-80 there. Not sure. Depending, I guess, on what this weather has in store for us. At least it's not snow. At least it's not snow. What is this? 
This is quite the dust storm. The rain stopped already, it moved over us, it's headed east. But now we got this dust cloud. Where's that coming from? It's crazy. It seems to be just getting whipped up by the wind off the fields. Wow. Oh, and we got an oversized load that wants to pass me. Really? You guys are just flying. Oh, good for you. Here comes the pilot vehicle. Letting everybody know we're flying through here with a wide load. Well, it's actually a long load. I think it's one of those uh, wind turbine propellers. Still, all this dust is pretty crazy. Just for the wind whipping that up. I don't know if the camera's even picking it up. Okay, they are in a hurry. I don't know if I would be going this fast with this load myself. I think I'd be taking it a little bit easier. Check this out, here it comes. Just flying. He's gotta be doing like 75 at least. 75 mile an hour. I thought there was a maximum speed limit for oversized loads. Maybe not here in South Dakota. Looks like they got it all under control, so it's not a big deal. It's just faster than I'd be going. the roads are closed around Omaha here. I-29 is closed all the way from north of Omaha all the way down into Missouri. So we're on these like back road detours. No idea where I'm going. I got 24 minutes left on the clock. I'm gonna go into, I'm going all the way around into the south part of Omaha right now and there's a TA that I'm hoping there's gonna be a parking spot for us. But like I said, we don't got much wiggle room right now. I wasn't expecting all these roads to be closed. I didn't check Google Maps. Google did say that the roads were closed, but I just assumed it's an interstate. The weather is nice. Why would it be closed? I wasn't expecting that. My dad told me today, though, that the highways were closed down here. I thought he meant south of Omaha, not north of Omaha. So, huh. <sighs> you want me to turn left right here? But I've got to focus on finding a parking spot here now, guys. Uh, we're going to continue this vlog in the morning as we go to unload in Lincoln, Nebraska. We're back at it, and it is hot. Hot, hot. My gauge right now says 35 Celsius. I am kind of moving kind of slow right now, so it's probably a little lower than that, but hot. We're here just east, no, pardon me, just west of Omaha, Nebraska, at their scale. And uh, it's Blitz Week, so they got a truck over there to the right in the garage that they're inspecting. A couple more to my right. I'm hoping to be able to sneak through here without an inspection because I have a load to deliver. I've got things to do, people to see. You don't want to talk to me anyways. I haven't showered today yet. I don't want to talk to them either. I don't like their uniforms. Uh-uh. You know, as soon as they like change into something else and they wear anything else other than their uniform and they, they clock out, they're off duty. Great people, I'd have a barbecue with them, definitely. As soon as they clock in and put that uniform on, I don't want to talk to them. You're not my friend. 
<laughs> okay, let's see if they, they let me through here. That was a really quick green light. <laughs> let's get out of here before they change their mind. Come on, hammer down. I thought they might want to see me. My steer tires are a little bit heavy. A little bit. I'm allowed 12,000 pounds on my steer tires, and I think they were sitting close to like 12,100. That's because I have my tarp strapped to the front of my trailer. If I move them to the back of my trailer, it's all fine. I just didn't move them. I'm only sitting at 75,000 pounds gross, so I'm 5,000 pounds under. Um, I thought they might wanna, you know, it's blitz week, any excuse to pull a driver in, I was a little nervous, but we're okay. Let's get out of here, let's go deliver this lumber. I gotta untarp it yet. So those of you who aren't truckers and may not know what that was, that was a scale house. Uh, the officers I was talking about in the uniforms, I'm just joking around, I'm sure they're great people. Uh, they're DOT officers, uh, Department of Transportation. In Canada, we call it the Ministry of Transportation. Or in Manitoba, I think we call it uh, uh, Motor Carrier Enforcement Officer. They've got a couple of different names depending on where you go, but in the US, DOT. Uh, as I like to call them, trucker cops. Their main focus is on transports like me. Uh, they're a necessary they're a necessary law enforcement. There's a lot of truckers out there who don't maintain their trucks, and what these guys' job is to do is to make sure that us truckers are obeying the law, that we're uh, not driving illegally according to our log books, that our trucks are safe to operate, you know, that a wheel's not gonna fly off into traffic and, you know, kill you and your family, that all of our lights work, and that the truck's in good working order, and that everybody's gonna get home safe. That's their job. So they're good people, they're doing a good job. It's just sometimes you meet the odd officer who uh, has a little bit of a power trip. And uh, they will comb through your truck, top to bottom, until they find something. That is questionable whether or not it was broken or not when they were looking at it, or if it just happened to break as they were looking at it. I don't know. Some people have had bad experiences where they just, the, the DOT officer will go over their truck again and again and again and until they find something to charge you with. I've never had that experience, so I'm talking out of pure jokes when I talk about how I don't want to talk to them. I don't care if I, I got nothing to hide. If I gotta go in there, I gotta go in there. It doesn't matter to me. They're usually very nice. I've never met a rude officer. I've never met an overambitious officer who uh, goes on a power trip. I've never done it. It's just sort of like a running joke with truckers. You know, we just don't want to talk to them. <laughs> None of us want tickets. We're already barely making it by because, you know, prices of everything else keep going up, but prices of freight aren't going up at the same rate. So truckers are making and taking home less and less. And, you know, now in Canada, anyways, we got a carbon tax to deal with. That comes out of my pocket personally when I fuel up at the pump. So that's several hundred dollars a month. Exit 409, to US 6. People say, oh, it's only five cents a liter. Oh yeah? Okay, you try buying six to 10,000 liters a month. Add it up and tell me if you want to pay my share for me, if it's not that much to you, because I don't want to pay that. That was money that would go on In into food on my table, you know? Turn left on US 6. And it turns a tight situation into something even tighter. Now they want to tax everything. Uh, let's not talk about that. It makes me mad. It makes me mad. I gotta deliver some freight. That's gonna make me happy. Once I deliver the freight, I get money. And money makes me happy. It's not the source of all happiness, don't get me wrong, but it definitely helps along the way. Turn left on US 6. Well, they took off the last bundle. And we've got an empty flatbed. And we've got an empty flatbed behind us. That's it. Done, now I just gotta get out of here and make my way to St. Joseph. Uh, and all the roads seem to be closed around here, so I'm gonna have to take the back roads down, 75. <laughs> eh, it'll take a little while, it'll be about three hours, but we'll do that tomorrow on tomorrow's video. So I am melting in the heat here, it's about 34 Celsius. I'm 
better get out of here. They all waiting for me or am I waiting for them? <laughs> Thanks for watching today, guys. I appreciate you tagging along all the way to here. Time to go pick up some steel and I'll see you tomorrow.